Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, having me here. So I'm Peichun. So I'm from a PhD student from UCLA. So today I would like to talk briefly about our recent work on a very specific topic on explaining slow table transfer, which is slow table transfer. So the work itself is more about the data crunching and analysis. But for today's uh, talk, I would try to focus more on the tool part, which is a TCP delay analyzer. So our thinking is that uh, there is no single there is no single study, including ours, can really explain all the BGP problems in the wild. So we were happy to share our tools, and if you feel interested after today's talk, and maybe maybe you can uh, use the tool to analyze your own BGP traffic, and maybe you can find something that's more interesting. So this is a uh, joint work by Kier and Shen. Uh, from Cisco and Level 3. So I'll be doing the talk today. So by BGP table transfer, we mean the massive routing uh, update that could affect a large portion of routing table. And this could be triggered uh, by the session reset uh, or, or by some major route change that we show here. So this should be good, at least by design, BGP is a hard state incremental update protocol. But the problem is, in practice, people do observe that the table transfer can be slow. And it becomes like a common knowledge that uh, the table transfer can take even five minutes or up to like 15 minutes. So the reason behind this remains unknown. So I quote unknown here because I am really making an overstatement. So when people do observe it's slow, then there are some people, including us, we try to figure out what the problem. So we do have some papers, some previous work that uh, discuss the, 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 the problem we uh, observe. But the unknown here is when it comes to operators like us, uh, and when it comes to our own table transfer, comes to our own BGP sessions, how can I know our own table transfer are affected by the problems that reported in the previous literature? Are there any new problems that specific to our own network? Or do I really need to do some uh, tedious uh, step I mean reporting the previous work in order to find the problems. So the goal of this talk is really to have some way to identify the delay time uh, more systematically or more efficiently. So our idea is to look at the um, TCP layer behavior. So after all, BGP is just like an application that's run uh, on top of TCP. So why TCP trace? Here I put an example of a sample a BGP table transfer. This is a TCP trace. So what we can see here is a table transfer that contains around uh, like five megadata, but it takes I think 560 seconds, even like around six, six minutes to finish, and it's pretty slow. So if we just roughly calculate the average throughput, it's only around like 76 kilobit per second, pretty slow. So what's the problem there here? So from the trace, uh, at least we can see there are many uh, retransmission, probably caused by packet loss. And there are some, also some period, like here. So there are some smooth period here. And they have different slope. This is because they, they caused by the TCP receiver at the various window or they are, uh, it's limited by center window just after the retransmission. So all of these, they contribute different amount of delay in this table transfer. And TCP actually is doing very good here. So it just do its work on recover the packet loss and uh, limit the TCP throughput. But the problem is today here is that we look at BGP usually at application level message only. So I put here an uh, example TCP, uh, sorry, uh, example BGP message that we usually collect and look at today. So here we uh, we have a bunch of updates, and these are the timestamp in unit stamp timestamp, and they are the prefix and the BGP path that are in the update. And the delay I put here is the the delay that uh, the time the timestamp of this update related to the first update we received here. So looking at this update only is challenging, it's a little bit challenging to, to see what, what are really problems behind this. And it's 
likely that we just conclude that these delays that are caused by the BGP routing convergence, likely if we don't have any other uh, data for this. But actually, these all updates that just come from the retransmission. So all these update, all these delay, they just because TCP is doing the retransmission. What we call the transport introduced delay here. And the problem here is that uh, we can just make the false attribution, say this delay are caused by the BGP convergence. And another part problem of this is that we just overlook the chance to fix these transport layer problems. For here, if we see this retransmission, probably we can just trace to see what caused, it, uh, what caused this retransmission, probably just a buggy link. So if we can fix that, then we can just uh, reduce the delay here. Another problem is even we agree that we need to look at the TCP trace, then how? Uh, it is good like we can just do the uh, visual inspection like we, like we show here. We just look there directly at the trace, but it could not be scaled across. Like, uh, f of, uh, especially in some large ISP, we have many, many routers and many like these uh, table transfer samples. And it's, be uh, it's also hard to quantify, like looking at this trace only. So that's why we uh, develop a, a delay analysis tool here. So the tool um, we developed, we call it TDATE. So it just stands for TCP Delay Analysis Tool. So the idea is that uh, we need this tool that uh, taking the raw trace, TCP trace, and you will automatically uh, tell us who are the contributors for the delay. So by contributors, we mean probably which, like which layer in the B uh, application layer. So in this context, it's a BGP uh, sending process. And it could be the TCP implementation of the router, or maybe the network interface, and also the where. So it's the sending router, or the receiving router, or the network path that are responsible for the delay. And for the detailed implement implementation of the tool, we just take a series-based approach. So what we do is we convert the TCP trace into a bunch of event series. So the event is like maybe, maybe the arrival, or the inter-arrival or, or data packet, egg packet, or some retransmissions. And we record them in two tuple, so the event duration and the event data. So if we look at the very simplified trace here, we have the egg and we have the data packet. So we can have a, we can have an example series like to track the, the evolution of advertise window so here we receive the egg at T3 and T5. So we record, uh, I mean, between T4, T3, T3 and T5, the advertised window is four. And also we can have other series, for example, the outstanding packet here to, to record the packet that has have been sent but not been acknowledged. So here we also have uh, a series to record this. So the idea is that after this conversion, we manipulate, we, we operate on this series to, uh, to infer the delay contributors. And the actual implementation is more complicated. So I tried to uh, briefly talk the high level idea in this figure. So in this one, we have an example segment of TCP trace, uh, the top half here. So we have a data packet the blue uh, square here. And we also have the egg, that the egg sequence or the TCP advertise window. And we also have a bunch of retrans packet retransmission here. So the idea of the tool is to convert, convert the trace to a bunch of event series, what we plot here, below here. The conversion, uh, different series, they, uh, uh, some, some, for some series, the conversion is pretty easy. So we can just extract the information from TCP packet header, for example, the, the TCP sequence or the TCP ad uh, advertised window size. But for some series, it, it could be more difficult. We need to like consider the relative size of the window and the outstanding packet or even the inter-arrival time of packet. But anyway, after all these conversions, we will have a bunch of a series as we plot here in a square waveform. So 
what we show here, uh, each square wave stand, uh, represent a delay instance, and the length of the wave is just uh, is represent the delay that introduced here. So a simple example is for the retransmission here. So here we have nine retransmission packet. So this this will be captured by a series here. So we also have nine square waves here. So each uh, the length of each wave is the uh, the time we spent in uh, retransmission. After we after we have all these uh, series, then we calculate the delay uh, delay contribution. So how we do this? Because we already have this like waveform series. So we just calculate the sum of the length of all the waves and we can divide it by the analysis period, which is the TCP BGP table transfer division in this case. So the output of the tool, we have like eight delay contributors, two for the BGP. For the BGP center, BGP receiver, two for the TCP, TCP center, TCP receiver and for, for the network. So it, stand, it, it represents the transmission time and the loss occur at the receiver side, center side, or in the network path. The ratio here is calculated using the, the way I just described. So we calculate using the size of the series divided by the an analysis period. So the 20.27 here means for this particular table transfer, we spend 27% of the time that is limited by the sending BGP process. So it's a meaning of here. And in addition to these eight delayed contributors, we summarize them in the three contribution, contributing groups for the sender side, receiver side, and the network side. So what we do is we just take the contributors that happens occur at the sender, and we uh, merge them together and have a new ratio here. So li this looks like a simple addition, but it's not. So we, what we do is we take the time series and we take the union of them. So we consider the overlap of them. So the, the value here could be a little bit uh, lower than the addition of uh, the three values here. And we, we do the same for the receiver side and the network side. So the purpose here is we apply this tool on BGP table transfer, and we can have these high level indicators to tell us where and who should be responsible for the delay. Okay, so moving on to the data set. We apply the tool uh, on the data set we collect from uh, one ISP and raw views, and we take advantage of the existing BGP monitoring setting. So in ISPA, there is there are already BGP collectors, we show here that appear with operational operational routers and save BGP update. And for route views, uh, we we take a Oregon collector. So this is the collector that route views has in the Oregon exchange point. So on top of this, we collect uh, TCP traffic and sends to the guys in ISPA and the route views. And the table here shows the, the summary, the, uh, the data trace we collect, the duration, and the, number, uh, the amount of data we collect. So the next problem we have here is we, want, we need to identify the BGP table transfer from the update. And this is okay for the collector, for the software collectors like Quagga, because we already have some methods that published back in 2005 or six that to uh, identify table transfer from the BGP application level update. But for the uh, vendor collectors back here, we use the SPA or the Oregon collector, they are just vendor box. So they don't save, they don't export the BGP uh, update. So what we do is we uh, use a site tool, a utility tool, what we call a PCAP to BGP. So we re reconstruct the TCP by stream from the packet. So consider the retransmission, uh, missing packet, uh, um, out of all the delivery, all this kind of stuff, and we can reconstruct the stream. And from the stream, we extract BGP message and store them in the MRT format. 
So based on these uh, constructed uh, MRT files, then we apply the uh, methods again and to identify the table transfer. So the identified table transfer, uh, the number of identified table transfer uh, are summarized here. So next step, we apply the tool of the t-date that uh, on these table transfers. And this is the result for the ISPA. So to, um, to repeat again, so we have the, we identify the table transfer and for each table transfer, we apply the t-date tool to give us some high level uh, ratio here, the group delay ratio. So example here just means the sending router respond for 70% for this particular table transfer. And for this one, supposedly I need to plot in 3D dimension because we really have three values uh, for each table. But we, what we observe is that usually the network part, the delay in, uh, introduced by the network is pretty slow, pretty, pretty low. So for the uh, ease of presentation, I just plot the 2D scatter part here. So in the figure here, the x axis is the sender side ratio, and the y, y axis is the receiver side ratio. And each data point here is a table transfer. So the location of this point in this figure tells us uh, who should respond for more for this one. So, if, so for the data point for the table transfer that at this side, at this corner, then it means the receiver, which is the collector here, uh, contribute more delay for this table transfer. And of course, for the slow, slow uh, another quarter, the other corner here is for the slow sender. Um, this figure is for the uh, data from the Quagga collector. So just one high level observation we can make here is for the vendor collector trace, more table transfer, they are limited by the sender side factor. And for the Quagga, it's more like uh, they are equally responsible. And we do additional step uh, to understand the reason. So for each table transfer here, we further check whether the table transfer is triggered by the sender or the receiver. So we have a table transfer, but which side of the router failed to trigger this uh, table transfer? And we probably, we overlay them using the red square here. So each red square here means we have a table transfer. That is because the same inside uh, router uh, fails and trigger the following table transfer. And one thing we can learn here is that the failing side uh, looks like, uh, seems like uh, it's more responsible for the, for the delay of the table transfer. And this makes sense in BGP because in BGP, the failing router, when it try to restart, then it, try, it start to receive and send update to all its neighbors. So put most straight on, on itself and make itself uh, more likely to be the uh, bottleneck. But when it comes to the raw views uh, Oregon, Oregon collector, then we don't really see uh, the trend here. And this is really because uh, for this Oregon collector, its peers, its operators, its operational routers are from uh, different different ISPs and all over the world and really heterogeneous settings. So we don't really see the trend here. So what the tool can help us here is we just pick one table transfer and the tool can automatically uh, give you some uh, just it trends that who should respond for. For example, in this particular table transfer, it spends 30 seconds to finish. And the reason is that uh, in this case, like we show using the contributor here. So this 86% is being the receiver's TCP window responsible for, for this delay. So we can see that the, the super is like smooth because the, the super is just like the, the advice window uh, divided by the run tree time. The second, ca uh, the second case here is just a slow sender. So in this particular case, uh, it took 160 seconds to finish. And the reason is that the sender router often stop. So for some reason, so even during the table transfer, it just stopped sending. And this could be due to some problem that we, uh, another, uh, another group they report back in 2009, uh, they found out there are some timer implementation of the router. So it's only like send 
uh, update periodically. And the third case here is just a, a table that uh, delayed by the, a lot of retransmissions, probably due to like packet loss. So we can see a lot of retransmission here, and it's captured by the loss series here. The point I will try to make here is that we do not uh, identify this case manually. So we apply the tool, and based on the uh, high label summary uh, number we get, and then we go back. Uh, I, I just show the, the trace here to, uh, for the, to show you the detail TCP. And if you like to uh, do like further investigation, this is the screenshot for the software. So if you have a TCP trace, you can uh, generate this uh, sequence figure, like a resin, uh, left hand side here, and you, you can use T-date to generate the sequence uh, series figure like I show here. And you can use in the visualization tool to plot both of them. And these two windows, they are synchronized, which means you can zoom in and zoom out in one of them. And the time range you specified will automatically uh, synchronize to the other one. So a quick summary. What I just described is a TCP DNA analy uh, analysis tool. And we demonstrate the usage using the uh, BGP monitoring data in one ISP and raw views. And supposedly, it can apply on the uh, operational data. So the result could be even more uh, meaningful. And the tool and the detailed report will be uh, made available at this uh, URL. And if you want to uh, try it out, it will be even more awesome. Because uh, like I say, limited by the data set we have, uh, probably you can find more, uh, even more interesting problems. And the potential usage. Um, there, there are some potential usage of the tool. So if you already have a running BGP monitoring settings, like if you already have BGP collectors, then you only, what you need to do is just like to uh, capture, uh, add a TCP sniffer to capture the, the, the traffic. Then we will have a bunch of tools to help you to process the TCP trace and visualize them on the T date to analyze the delay. And also possible if uh, we can, you can just sniff uh, the traffic during two operational routers, and then you don't really need a, a quagga collector, for example. Then we will, from the TCP trace, we can extract the BGP, BGP message for you, so the, we can really see the actual message delay during the uh, message exchange be between two operational routers. So for the ongoing work here, the tool can really use some improvement. So we have a bunch of parameter settings that sh could be could need need to be tuned uh, if using in uh, different network settings. And another is that one assumption I didn't mention is that currently the tool assumes the conventional TCP versions. So we assume that the TCP is uh, control is based on the center side condition window and the receiver side advertising window, and this should be fine in this context of BGP, given that usually routers, they don't really have fancy TCP implementations. But if you do know some, then I would like to know. And we also we keep um, uh, collecting BGP trace from ISP and uh, raw views and also from uh, one router from UCLA. And the tool itself uh, could be have a uh, has a potential usage for other TV applications in addition to BGP. So that's it. So the point of this work is really not to, for the result part, I think it really depends on the, what the data we collected. So what we really try to uh, do here is to motivate that uh, you, you can see that there, there, there's really problems uh, uh, between the BGP and TCP interaction. And it would be better if you can try the tool or share your BG, uh, TCP data with us. So that's it. Questions from the audience? A couple detail. Hi. I'm sorry, uh, could you s state your name yep, and affiliation? Yep. Susan Harris, um, long term BGP person. Well, wait. Um, TCP, you, you made a couple statements, um, uh, and you worked with Leisha, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So a couple statements I'm sure you have, because you worked with Leisha, you have more of the details that you might be able to provide or post to the list. Mm -hmm. One is you used, if I understood everything, the Quagga TCP based on a Linux version. You probably have a Linux version uh, specification. It would be good if you would post that or if you would send that to list or maybe I'm interested because the TCPs, as you mentioned, do mm -hmm. matter. Uh, the Quagga and the Linux don't necessarily have the best TCP in house. Yeah, yeah. I Did agree. you? Second question. So, you've done that. Good. Please post. Second, the TCPs in the routers are probably more tuned than you think for BGP, at least to the reports that I've had. So that assumption might bear review. Um, so, okay. have you done any testing with any commercial router TCPs? Actually, for your first question, I need to check with the data source to see if I can really uh, post the detailed configuration for the like, version of the Linux bus of the Quagga. And for the second question, uh, no, I don't really check to see each individual router's TCP invitation and how they tune, uh, how they tune, if they have any like, optimi optimization in their routers. It might be good to check. Have you? Let me be more specific and more clear in my question. I apologize if I'm unclear. You have a particular. Have you done any testing with any commercial routers on this pro, on this tool? Uh, in this result, the sending side they are commercial routers. It's just the collector, the receiver side. There is one software router. Okay. The it, would, it would be good then to also publish the parameters for the TCP as that will matter uh, and exactly what type of uh, parameters you set on the routers. Okay. Because that piece is a detail that makes all the difference. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And um, does the receiver take any specific additional code or additions to TCP? And is it, fourth question, since I'm queuing up the questions, have you done it with any of the newer TCPs? You mean, when you say newer TCP, you mean? STCP, some of the other um, changes in TCP. No. So for the, like I say, there are two type of receivers here. One is the Quagga. So for that one, probably we can have, like, test the new TCP implementations. But if the collector is just a vendor box, then it really comes to how, what are the TCP implementation in those uh, routers, and we don't have the answers, answers to change the, those uh, TCP implementation in vendor box, because they are not, uh, actually they are not our box. We only take the data and we analyze them. So for this tool to work, you, do, you did say it takes changes to Quagga TCP stack? At current stage, no. We only okay. observe the output. So we, we do the okay. analysis as well. With TCP dump. Thank you very much. Yes. This is interesting work. It's just the details would be also interesting since you piqued yeah. the curiosity. Yeah, we have a, also have a report together at the website. And, but we don't really have like the, the parameters setting in the report. So if I can uh, post them, I would do that. Without that, the, the data isn't real useful? What? So without the parameters of TCP, it, it's hard to judge against other past statistics in this area. So it would, if you could find it, that would be very helpful. Okay. And yeah. thank you again for the nice work. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Additional questions, anybody? Very good. Thank you again. That was really nice.